Good morning, thank you for coming. I'm feeling better, I'm not 100%. And I took a COVID-19 test on Wednesday, which was negative. Whatever virus affected me is still lingering. So I gave my best to the class I taught earlier this morning. You're left with the scraps of my convalescing brain. Today, I'm going to review some intermediate to advanced features in DocuWiki. If there is time, I will continue with my discussion of chapter four, accompanied by the notes that I post that I posted uh, Sunday for Monday's class. Keep in mind, if you still are one of the few students who doesn't have login credentials for the assignment, the last digital assignment, which entails the creation of a DocuWiki page, send me an email. The others registered during a hands-on activity two weeks ago, and a few more students have already emailed me. You need to have a username and a password to receive that in order to complete that assignment. If you go to the week where the assignment is posted, which is week nine, you find the deadline for that assignment, April 1st. You find where you log in, which is the place where you have editing privileges because otherwise, if you try to log in within the test 2020 wiki, you'll just be able to review, to see the pages, but you will not be able to find the icon with a crayon that allows you to edit a page that is where your privileges were set, confined to that space, which is what is done within a proper wiki and I added some basic instructions and a list of possible inclusions meaning this is what I'm expecting to find in your page for this particular assignment if you want to add more you can do so also keep in mind that this is the last assignment after that there will just be readings because you're supposed to be working on your final project. Decide the app you want to base your digital project on, whether it's going to be Notion or Evernote or DocuWiki. If you have other alternatives, especially from the list that you find during the last two weeks of the lesson plans, if you're familiar with apps such as Roam, Obsidian, Nimbus Note or similar, let me know and I can grant you permission to use another knowledge app for your final project. If your final project is going to be based on DocuWiki, you need to let me know as soon as possible because rather than just proceeding with the space where you have editing right now, I will designate a space where only you will have editing right, and then you also communicate with me whether you want your digital project for DocuWiki to be accessible to anyone, viewable to anyone who has the link, or limited just to you and to me for reasons that have to do with your choices or with the nature of the content, okay? And of course, during the completion of your final project, you can still refer to me to discuss any issues having to do with the nature of the content, the size of the project, and any technical issues that you need to address. Of course, any of, of those apps will also have plenty of help pages, forums, etc. But you can refer to me also for technical support.
everything that I am showing today is also covered by the wiki syntax page that is automatically created for every wiki in DocuWiki. And I posted a link to that page, which is entitled Formatting Syntax at the top of the page where you find the pages of the students. So you can simply click on that and you will find the code that I'm showing today and much more. You have a table of content which can be shown simply by clicking on this down arrow that allows you to go quickly to any particular section. I want to direct your attention in particular to this dynamic section at the end of the table of content called syntax plugins because DocuWiki by itself is rather basic but it becomes very powerful once you start adding one of the plugins that were created by the community. This is open source software, so the plugins, the software itself is available for free. At any given time, there are seven or 800 plugins. Some of them may become obsolete, meaning that there are people who, usually it's not an individual, usually it's more than one is one might create the first in instance of the plugin and others will chip in and make it better. But some of those plugins, then the development of those plugins is abandoned and they become out of sync with the versions of DocuWiki. Therefore, uh, some plugins, they, they will tell you right away when you find them, uh, whether they're compatible with the a version of DocuWiki that you have installed, but some of them uh, fall, fall out of the way and are not updated anymore. So whenever you add a plugin, this page is integrated with information about the plugin. So when I click on this, I see <laughs> references to all of the plugins that are included in this wiki. And I'm mentioning that because both in reference to the construction of your page for the last digital assignment and also, more importantly, for the final project, you want to take advantage of some of the advanced features offered by these plugins. And as you see, you only find a bullet point and some basic information, but the most important part is the link. So, the discussion plugin allows you to add a discussion section to your page. I don't think you want to do that for your assignment, but just to show you an example, when I click, this is what I find. Let me zoom in. And within the first section for each plugin, this is the template, the basic template for plugins, I find what is compatible with, and unfortunately, DocuWiki has not been updated since 2020. I say unfortunately because it seems like the issues that we had in class during the end on activity where people were not able to save their pages and they got the 503 error that says server unavailable. In my view, I tried to modify the configuration of the, I, I did one change that I thought would be beneficial to the configuration of the server uh, for, for my wiki, but I, I didn't see much of a difference. And I think the issues have to do with the fact that Hogfather, this version, is not fully compatible with the Apache software that runs every server, which has reached version 7.8, I think, if not 8 point something, and we need a new version to uh, use the power of that software. For every plugin you see when it was last updated, you see the areas that it affects or is connected to. You see whether or not it conflicts 
with other um, plugins that you may have installed. Some plugins rely on other popular plugins. PageList is a very popular plugin, one that is installed by most people, for example. It, it is required if you want to have tags and you want to have tags for a wiki. What's a wiki without tags, right? It tells you whether you have alternatives, so it's similar to Discus, although Discus is not working as well as it did a few years ago, etc. And it's tagged with discussion because the primary function is to provide a discussion space, tells you whether the same way that there are plugins that are required to run this, you find also that this is needed to run other plugins, and you find who worked on that, uh, and some of these people are recurring names. Gina is very active, Michael somewhat active. Sometimes you find the name of the creator, of the original creator of DocuWiki, Andreas Klaw, uh, as as well. And, of course, the most important part is the description and then the instructions. So if you want to make use of any of the plugins that are installed already in the test wiki, you should review the documentation, which is usually no more than a few pages. And sometimes, at the end of it, you find a, dis a discussion among users in this case, the discussion is being moved, but sometimes users will mention glitches that are possible depending on the configuration of your software or depending on the browser where you use DocuWiki. So something to keep in mind, something to review. Now, this is part of the section of DocuWiki for plugins that if you review that section itself, there is just docuwiki.org slash plugins. There you find all of the plugins and you can filter them by function, right? You can see from the scroll bar that it's a very long page and you can organize them by last update, by popularity, right? It's nice to see who's using what, what are the most popular plugins. Or you can click on any of these tags and you see that there, there is a hierarchy by size. The reason why some names are larger is that depending on how many plugins are associated, let's say, with search, the tag is sized correspondingly, right? And there are fewer, far fewer plugins that have to do with scheduling, and that's why the tag schedule is uh, so smaller. And if you click on any of them, then you find just the 58 plugins that have to do with search that are marked with search. And this is the premise to uh, my recommendation. If you want to work with DocuWiki on your final project and based on the nature of your project, you need a particular kind of plugin to include a function in your wiki, you just have to tell me which plugin I, as the administrator of the wiki, should add. I will review the plugin to make sure that it is compatible with the 2020 uh, version of DocuWiki that runs the wiki. I will make sure that it doesn't conflict with the plugins that I already installed, and then I will add it so that you will have that functionality, okay? So keep in mind that DocuWiki is a bit more involved. It looks like something that uh, requires some predisposition to programming or at least some familiarity with programming. It can be less user-friendly than Notion or especially Evernote, but also it can be much 
more powerful um, for uh, a project that has to do with knowledge, a project that involves complex ways to handle knowledge-related content. Go back to my page. There it is. And I will proceed with my demonstration. As I said on other Fridays, if you want to open your page and experiment along the way, please do so. Otherwise, just follow what I'm doing on the screen and feel free to interact with questions and comments. If you're working on your page, keep in mind that especially when uh, people are working on the same broadband connection, wireless connection in this case, uh, from, from this room, you might have issues saving the page. However, every time you preview your page, a draft of the page gets saved. Don't save your page too often. If you want to avoid 503 messages, issues with the server. But as I said, if you click preview to see what happens to your page, then even later on, even an hour from now or this afternoon, when you access the page again, you will find a draft that can be recovered. And of course, I can recover the page for you as well if you notify me because the administrator, the super user, has that power. So I'll go to one of the two demo pages that I have created for myself. And as you can see, right now, I can only see the code for this page because I haven't logged in. So I need to log in. The username and password are being remembered by the browser because I opted for that. Keep in mind that if you forget your password, as long as your username, you remember your username, which should be simple, your first name and the initial of your last name was the suggested username, all lowercase, and if the email inside your profile was set correctly, and I've reviewed those emails to make sure, then you can just click on set new password and the system will send you a new password. Keep in mind that sometimes, depending on uh, the setup of the Gmail server, the message which is sent automatically by the server might be identified as spam. But again, if you don't receive the message within a minute, you check the spam folder. And of course, I'm also uh, in, in charge of the user profiles so you can also go through me and I can update your password as needed. Okay, now I'm logged in. And you can log in from anywhere inside the wiki, right? And you will see log out. This means that you uh, are logged in. However, as I said before, if you log in from the portal of this test 2020 site, you will not have the crayon because you're not being given authority to modify the portal. You're being given editing rights only within this space, which is the 2022 test pages area of the wiki. And your rights are limited. So you can uh, create new pages. You can, of course, read pages edit pages, you cannot, given on the set of rights that I gave users of this wiki, you cannot delete a page. You need my intervention for that. You cannot upload files. If you decide to proceed with your final project using DocuWiki, then I will grant you those rights as well, limited 
to a certain area, the right to upload files and the right to delete a page. I didn't give you intentionally the right to upload files because I don't want someone to upload a file that is copyright protected, right? I don't want you to steal pictures from somewhere else or music or other stuff. And for a project, given that uh, uh, supposedly a small number of people would use DocuWiki, I can double check myself. Okay, so now I can open the page and this is the applet. I added, I got a request a couple of weeks ago and therefore that had to do with formatting and coloring the uh, uh, fonts. So I added a typography plugin, which is why the applet you see now is different from the one that I showed you before, because there are three additional buttons and this allows you to color the font. This allows you to specify the size of the font. This allows you to choose between serif and no serif. Two sets of styles. So you just select something and then I can say this should be red and you find some HTML codes added to this and the plugin takes care of transforming these codes once you visit the actual page because these are not HTML pages. Everything you do in here is saved as a text file. If you go and look at my server, you will find that inside this folder, what you find is a series of TXT files with this code and then the PHP software running DocuWiki on the server transforms everything in the space of a tenth of a, a second when uh, people access the page. You don't see any lag, really. Uh, you, you visit a page and it appears to you as if it was codified in HTML when it is not. So this is how the typography plugin works. You select and then you apply, and you can apply multiple things you still have to select so I can have it red and also apply extra extra large and now when I preview the page this is what I find it's ugly it's useless but just to show you and then it's up to you to decide it's important for you to decide what kind of meaningful content your digital page will have to justify any kind of formatting or structure you want to include in that page. Don't, don't be random. I'm, I'm being random in my demonstration just for the sake of time and also because I'm a terribly slow typist, so any real life example would require uh, a better kind of expediency with typing. Okay, so let's go through the list. So we'll start with some simple text formatting. Here we are. I, I don't have an issue with typing slowly and typing badly, although this keyboard is also terrible, uh, because I use voice recognition. I enable voice recognition on my iPad, uh, which can be done in different ways. You can have the microphone on the on-screen keyboard or you can enable it from the home button if you have an older iPad or from the power button and then whatever you say is converted into text. On my Windows computer, I use Dragon Naturally Speaking that allows you to dictate anywhere. And of course, I don't have it here. So what I want to show you that I haven't shown before is that you can use the code Dell in angular parenthesis. Let me make it larger so you can see better. And of course, for any opening tag, there is a closing tag and the convention for this kind of styling and coding is simple, rather ordinary for 
a number of coding languages, including HTML, the close tag will just be the same as the opening tag with a slash in front of the code. So if I want to have striped through from here to there, again, I click preview, then I have to specify opening and closing tag. If I don't close the tag, if I don't include the closing tag, then as you've seen in one of the demonstration in the videos that I posted in lieu of Wednesday's class, then everything else is affected. Nothing else is interpreted as code. Everything else is interpreted as text. And the formatting is extended either to the end of the paragraph or to the very end of the page, depending on the code itself and how it is regulated. The next thing is superscript and um, subscript. And again, you have SUP for superscript, SUB for subscript, and let's have this. And again, is slash and then the same code and you have the text in subscript you like the joke about Venice I was talking about Venice with a student from the previous class who's planning to go to Italy and was asking me which place to visit among Venice Florence and Rome and of course, if you need to have a squared number, you may want to use the superscript code. Bless you. And there you have it, right? The superscript code. You don't need to use superscript for footnotes, references, because that is done automatically by the system. The system has a very nice uh, annotation system that allows you to have footnotes, meaning they're placed at the bottom of the page. And the way the markdown coding system is done, as you know, something as simple as a parenthesis repeated twice is used as code. A single parenthesis is shown on the screen, a double parenthesis becomes code, and of course you need opening and closing tags. And whatever I write there will become a footnote. And this is it. I have the reference number. I have the footnote placed under a horizontal line automatically. And notice the blue tint of the reference number because that allows me to click and go from the text to the footnote and vice versa. Right now, since there is no text, they're in close proximity, but just imagine that they're three or 10 screens away from each other. And this allows you, it's already programmed. So you don't have to, it's about saving money, saving time and focusing on productivity, focusing on the content, the organization of the content. All these things that can be done with HTML, but require coding and coding are done almost automatically and of course the numbering is automatic so if i place another footnote it'll become number two if i place a footnote between the first and the second footnote the numbers will be rearranged if i put a footnote before number one number one will become footnote number two etc etc You know that 
usually, as you can see from the screen now, in order to have blocks of text, text displayed as separate paragraphs, I need to include a black line in between them. If I don't, just pressing enter once will not create a separate block. The text will be bunched together. However, the formatting, the template, the style sheet applied to the pages of this wiki may include some, uh, for example, space between paragraphs, right? Whereby the bottom, the text around a paragraph includes three pixels, nine pixels, 15 pixels of white space. And sometimes instead, let's say you have a poem or the lyrics of a song, you don't want to have the lines in that poem to be separated by so much white space. You want to go to the next line, you want the lines to be separate, but you don't want them to be too far apart. In that case, you find a code, this is a line, and with two backslashes separated by spaces, you can achieve that result. When I click preview, this is what I have. And as you can see, instead of having this much space between one line and the other, which would be rather ugly for this kind of song, you have this kind of, of text. You have a regular amount of space and still have those lines separated, okay? Just by using the two back slashes. Of course, you can achieve a similar effect by using the quote code, which is done by using a regular character, which would be displayed on the screen if it were typed within the line of text, but if it is placed at the beginning of a line, then produces the effect of a quote. And when I preview this, this is what I find. And again, this is just the default for this kind of template, the same as with plugins. You also find hundreds of templates developed by the community of users. And usually it's quite easy to borrow one that is close enough to what you have in mind and then modify that slightly to fit your needs rather than build an entire set, an entirely new style sheet, which would require an advanced knowledge of CSS. So you can change the font, you can change the spaces between elements, you can change the size, the default size of the font or the size of the font for headings, etc. You can also multiply the number of angular parentheses to produce this kind of effect, which is a bit dated, but you might need to have a quote inside a quote, and that's how you create that. Still in reference to the formatting of text, there are some simple ways to turn text into symbols. So for example, if you want to have 
a narrow, you can just click hyphen and the angular parenthesis anywhere, not just at the beginning of a line, or an equal sign, and then the same kind of parenthesis, and you see they're transformed into symbols from the ASCII table, right? Which are nicer to see. And you can do the same for other things that are commonly used. For example, the copyright symbol, the register symbol, the trademark symbol, they're all encoded in very simple ways. So you see that what I typed turns into the typographical symbols for copyright, registered, and trademarked. Still, the purpose is for anyone to save time and focus on production, productivity, rather than um, formatting and coding. There is also the possibility of producing um, em emoticons the same way, right? Uh, so I can do this. And of course, boomers include noses in their emoticons. So there you have it. And there is the iPhone as well. And you have the winking face. But of course, we can do different things. There you have it. Dark glasses, smiley face. Sometimes, depending on the text, you may have to include passages where you don't want whatever you type to be interpreted as code. And there are different ways. One simple way is to just start a line with two blank spaces and everything uh, placed there uh, is placed in a box. So that, for example, if I put two stars that should produce both, everything is instead interpreted literally and automatically, this is added. Not, it, it can be used as a replacement for a call out box, but it's not the best exactly because you cannot format anything. And if you want to use a call out box, then you use one of the pos most popular plugins, which is called RAP, W-R-A-P, which is included in here. And if you need instructions, you can find them there in, in the wiki syntax. There are alternatives to this because this is a feature especially useful for people who are producing documentation for programming languages with want to produce a wiki for this. So other alternatives for this would be code. And of course, the resulting tag. Code as it is has the same effect as the two blank spaces at the beginning of a line. However, the need for this particular tag code is that you can then just add for the first tag, for the opening tag only, no need for the closing tag, but in here, you can add code, space, and then Java, code, JavaScript, code, PHP, and then the program will automatically format whatever you write according to the conventions of JavaScript, Java, or PHP coding with the colors that are associated with the instructions, with the indentations, etc. And the final way to produce that is no wiki followed by 
the same with a slash. And again, even no wiki means that anything that is typed in between these tags will not be formatted according to the usual rules. However, if you just want to do something simpler, let's say you want to, you need to include asterisks and you don't want them to be interpreted as formatting, the easiest way would be to add two percentage signs and then these two asterisks will appear on the screen instead of being interpreted as code for formatting. You see the asterisks there. Otherwise, any couple of asterisks together would mark the beginning of formatted text and if I'm missing the closing tag, meaning another two asterisks, then everything from this point on would be formatted bold and anything interpreted as pure and simple text. Let me show you, in fact, maybe I should show you what happens. Let's say I put two slashes here, which marks the beginning of a text that is formatted as italics. Let's see the preview and what is the result of this. You see, from this point on, not everything is interpreted. Everything is. Uh, so there are some things that are bunched up and they're not together. Some things are still working because you can combine superscript with italics. So whatever you can effectively combine with this code is maintained, but other things, for example, the separation between paragraphs was ignored, right? And everything is interpreted as code up to the end of the page, including the footnote. Whenever you see this kind of scrambling, it means you haven't provided the proper closing. And as soon as I restore the integrity of the code, and I close that italicized text, everything goes back to the way it was. Okay, so keep this in mind. Also keep in mind the first rule for technical glitches. It's not a problem until you provide a bad solution to it. Every problem can be solved until you mess with it. So if you don't know how to fix something, just let it be, call on me to intervene and rectify because there are a lot of things that I can remedy, but if you keep applying the wrong solution to a problem, you, you might uh, make it complicated or impossible for me to recover whatever you had initially. And keep in mind that you shouldn't go working for too long without saving, Although the opposite is also dangerous. Don't save every 30 seconds. It's not like Microsoft Word. Even Microsoft Word will mess up files if you do that. And as a, an intermediate measure, whenever you're working, once in a while, click preview, which is fine anyway. You want to review and preview will create a draft of your page. And keep in mind that I have access to the versions that were saved before, besides the last draft, I also have access to previous versions of the page, which I can restore upon your request, right? If you see here, that would be the second icon with this watch and an arrow going back in time. This is where I can access previous saved versions of the same page. I can see, I can compare what I have now, what I had before, and then opt for one of those versions. One of the things that makes DocuWiki particularly powerful is the fact that you can also embed code from HTML, PHP, and JavaScript, if you're familiar 
with those languages. And therefore, uh, in most instances, you will need just a simple page with text formatting organized in some way, some way that is convenient for uh, the content uh, that you have. But in other instances, you may want to include a script to make your page more dynamic, or you have a rather complex format in mind for a page or a particular set of pages, in which case all you have to do, if you're familiar with HTML, is put the angular parenthesis, put HTML in capital letters. It can be lowercase or uppercase. Lowercase is used for inline formatting, applied just to uh, a small block of text, and uppercase HTML is the code for an entire page, a series of blocks, Right, so you separate them, you don't put them in a line, you separate them in different lines, and again, you have the slash to mark the end of this code. And now, in here, I can follow the conventions of uh, HTML. For example, I can say this is a paragraph, and I mark the end of this paragraph, And this time, even if I don't separate the paragraphs with two carriage returns, right? Even if I bunch them together, they'll be treated as separate characters. And you see the default spacing that I find in between paragraphs based on this template was applied, which means that in here, rather than using the typography plugin that only gives me one option for serif, one option for sans serif, uh, I can add a particularly style of font, I can add a particular font size, and uh, I, I can of course control the colors much more finely than with the typography uh, plugin etc. But more importantly, this is not done for a cosmetic reason primarily. More importantly, if I want to run a JavaScript script from the page, then let, let's say I want to, to have uh, the date uh, inserted dynamically so that every time the user opens the page, he finds the date of the day without me having to update the date, I write a JavaScript uh, script for that, I put it there with the proper HTML code and it will work inside the page. Right, so you can extend the functionality of DocuWiki in many ways. You have a finer control of your wiki with DocuWiki, even though for these advanced features you need to have specific competencies that you, you, you bring into the project yourself, okay? But this makes DocuWiki still powerful and still viable as a project, even though they need to come up with the new stable version to keep up with the Apache and not uh, make these wiki kind of precarious when it comes to saving content. I have about five minutes, so I'm going through the list and see what I want to add. Well, now, this was part of one of the videos that I posted on Wednesday when I was sick. I'll just put it, review it together with you. So, curly brackets are the standard, of course, two curly brackets. If you put one, it will be displayed on the screen. If you put two, it will be interpreted as code. Two curly brackets, opening and closing, is the standard for DocuWiki for any kind of media content. It means that if I put JPEG, in, JPEG reference in between these curly brackets, I'll have an image shown. If I put a reference to an MP3 file, I'll have a player with a play button that turns into a stop and pause button, 
and also allows the user from three dots on the side to download the file. Anything that is placed there has to do with media. As I said before, you're not allowed to upload an image to the server and the way you should proceed is find images that you need and the best way is not Google images really. The best way would be to go to Wikipedia because Wikipedia is basically the largest repository of copyright free images that you can find. Okay, Dennis Sullivan, which I believe is one of our own, right? This mathematician from Stony Brook who was awarded the Abel Prize. Let's find another image. Okay. Um, Okay, an image from New Zealand. How do we borrow this image? I need to include the link associated with the image, which is not the link you find in the URL bar. The URL bar offers you a link not to the image, but to the whole page where you find the image. So how do you find the link to the image? You click on the image, you right click on the image, right? If you right click, then you have this kind of floating box, which might change according to the browser, but one way or the other, it will always include copy image link. This is what you need to do. I copy image link, then I go back in here and I press Control V, Command V for uh, the, if, if you have a, a Mac. And it doesn't matter how long it is. I know that this is the exact link that points at the image. And since I have enclosed this in curly brackets, when I save the page, I have my image and the image, of course, is rather large, larger than my page itself. So it resizes to expand and fill up all the space. Let's say I want to reduce this image or I want to frame this image within text. Let me open this. No, now I'll use this, right? Instead of opening the whole page from here, I'll press edit, although it'll open up pretty much everything in this case anyway, because I don't have subsections. So I go back to this. And first of all, I could use a vertical bar and add a caption, well, a floating caption, which is good practice. Instead of doing that, I want to show you that if I add a question mark, then there are a series of codes that I can add. For example, I can specify that this will only be 450 pixels wide, and I can combine this with ampersand with no link, which means if the user wants to click on the image, nothing will happen. Otherwise, the image will be on the screen with black margins. And when I preview this, no, it's so big and my page is limited, so let me make it even smaller. There it is, and now my image is rather small, and the way I frame it with the text, or the way I align it, is by using two blank spaces. If I put two blank spaces in between the curly brackets and whatever follows at the end, it'll be centered. If I just put two blank spaces on one side or the other, it'll be left or right to the text that I place underneath. So whatever text I combine it with, I can have the image framing, framed within the text, by the text, and the image 
uh, being placed inside the text and that was also demonstrated in the video.